The bombs are one thing. The bombs are one thing. Starvation is another. You know, it, it, it's, it's amazing to me how many dimensions, how many layers, how many levels uh, of cruelty. It's like a cake of death. How many layers of cruelty they have engineered and planned and structured and created, uh, uh, you know, for the Palestinians to suffer. It, it is truly remarkable. The New York Times decided to wake up. They decided to wake up. And when I say wake up, I mean someone who is half awake, half asleep. You know, they want to talk a little bit about the starvation, but uh, they don't really want to say, you know, what the cause is. People are starving in Gaza. Yes, why are they starving? Would you mind elaborating in your bloody title? That would be very nice. Why isn't more aid getting to Gazans? The title should be, Israel is starving people in Gaza. This is not difficult. This is not difficult. This, this is criminal behavior. I swear to God, this is criminal behavior. This headline is criminal behavior. They are aiding and abetting a genocide. How dare you call yourself a paper of record? You are not even fit to be toilet paper. So now they say, 1.1 million people could face deadly levels of hunger by mid-July. There are already 30 people that have died of hunger, the majority of them children. Humanitarian organizations have said that the problem is not a lack of available aid. The UN said it has enough food at or near Gaza's border to feed the enclave's 2.2 million people. Instead, humanitarian workers say they face challenges at every point in the process of delivering aid through Israel's security checkpoints and into an active war zone. Who writes like this? This is garbage. This is trash. Why is this sentence so long? Why can't you just say Israel is blocking food from entering Gaza? Jesus Christ, do I have to teach you English? The land delivery route is complex. Really? Is it? So there are just two entry points into the territory that are regularly operating, both in the south. Uh, typically, aid, aid must travel dozens of miles and make multiple stops, a process that can take three weeks. Their point here is that in the north, you are screwed. Let me make that clear from now, from the onset. From, for everything from the top to the middle of Gaza, from the north to the center of Gaza, you, you are screwed. They, no one is either, even attempting to, to deliver aid because the roads have been destroyed by the Israelis, courtesy of Uncle Sam, and you yourself could get killed by the Israelis, once again, courtesy of Uncle Sam. So you have aid coming in through planes, ships, and trucks. I mean, I don't know what, you know, what they're trying to explain to us, how, how, you know, <laughs> how things are delivered in the world. Okay, thank you. Great. We, we know it's here. So let me, let me go down here to, to, to these security checks because you're going to love what the Israelis do. You're going to love what the Israelis do. So look at the map. Everything goes to Al-Arish, right? The planes, the ships, the trucks. It's all warehoused down here. You, you do see my mouse, right? Over here at Al-Arish. Then you want to get food into Gaza. You have to go to Rafah, okay? Rafah is on the border between Gaza and Egypt. Now, I want you to just look at this arrow. Do you see the giant arrow on my screen, the purple one? As I scroll down, look how it changes. So the trucks divert. Instead of just going right into Palestine, no, 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 no. They have to divert so the Israelis can inspect them. Oh, how generous and courteous of our Zionists to do this. How nice of them to inspect the trucks. So once again, you have trucks trying to go from Egypt into Palestine. It's literally, you drive straight. Look at the highway. You just drive straight. No detours, nothing. Straight, 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 straight. It couldn't be simpler. But no, 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 no. You have to turn so, to the Israelis. You, you're not going to, quote unquote, Israel, but the Israelis won't inspect the trucks. This is what happens when you have presidents like El Sisi, who is basically a house sand Negro. He is an Arab slave who wants to do what the white masters in London and Washington tell him to do. And for that, they pay a lot of money, a lot of money. So I'm going to get to that in a bit, how much money he gets. 
But he is basically a traitor. He's a traitor to Egyptians, a traitor to Palestinians, and a traitor to Arabs. And instead of saying, up yours to the Israelis, I am giving these trucks to the Palestinians, and you can screw yourselves. No, he, d he lets the Israelis just run the whole operation like a good house sand Negro. Well done. So they go to Kerem Shalom, which is the bastardization, the Israeli uh, bastardization of, of the name, uh, or Nizana. Do you see how, how far down that is? I mean, you can't even see it on the screen. Look, look how, I mean, Jesus Christ, you, <laughs> where, where, they, where do they want you to drive? Into the Red Sea at this point? What a waste of time. What an utter waste of time. Why would you divert? People are literally starving to death and you divert? I mean, it, it, this is incredible to me, really. And keep in mind, these trucks have already been checked. The Egyptians have already checked them. No, no. Got to do what the Israelis want. So what happens here is that um, after clearing in, uh, Israeli inspections, uh, trucks in Nizana might make their way to Rafah crossing or to Kerem Shalom. So it's just total waste of time because you drive all the way back. Now, now look at this. Okay. Aid headed into northern Gaza has to pass through one of two uh, other Israeli checkpoints. So you, you've already passed through one down here. Then you go into Rafah, and then you still have to go waste time at another Israeli checkpoint. So no wonder people in the north are, are literally dying. No wonder. Okay? And I, and I want to show you what they're doing, the Israelis here, because it, it is truly so evil. So what the Israelis do is they, they look at the truck, and they say, for example, well... This is a dual-use item. Uh, you have to remove it. What is dual-use? I'll explain to you. Dual-use, for example, is, uh, let's say, cement. Uh, Israel bombed someone's house. They would like to have cement to rebuild their house. But, according to Israel, you could build a nuclear bunker with cement. Uh, you could build, a, I don't know, a, a cannon with cement. I mean, I'm joking, but, but you understand how ridiculous this is? Because there's any possibility of using the cement for some ridiculous scenario, therefore you are not allowed to have the cement. Goodbye. This is true. There's no cement allowed. But now we're talking about food. We're talking about water testing kits. Israel are banning water testing kits. And randomly, one day it may, may go through, the next day it may not. I'll show you this from Oxfam themselves. Look at this. Arbitrary rejection of dual-use items. Israel is arbitrarily rejecting aid items or uh, as, as dual-use, right? This is the, t the term. Civilian goods with a potential military use. I mean, what does that mean? A flashlight, it could also have potential military use. Am I allowed to, you know, use a flashlight when there's no electricity? This is ridiculous. Such items include flashlights, batteries, batteries, right? Water pipes, fittings, and medical supplies, right? So, for example, scissors. You need scissors to, to you're, you're wrapping, uh, uh, you know, some, some, Isra some, some Palestinian child who has had their arm blown off by an Israeli bomb. You're trying to treat them and then, and then you know, cut the bandage or the, um, uh, the gauge. You can't. No, no, no scissors allowed. Some items may pass one day. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in for you. Some items may pass one day and be rejected the next. The list of rejected items is overwhelming and ever-changing. For example, solar items are key items that allow people without fuel to have lights at night. Because uh, otherwise, you know, if, if you don't have fuel for the generator, you need the solar panel. And to generate power to charge their phones. A pre-approval system has been put together in order to limit the risk of rejection for sensitive items. Still, still, critical items may be randomly rejected by Israeli authorities. For instance, items such as water bladders, tap stand kits, microbiological water testing kits, and chemical water quality testing kits in an Oxfam shipment were rejected with no reason for the rejection provided. Then, after seeking pre-approval for these items, permission for them to enter Gaza was granted. It is unclear if the previous rejections were due to the items themselves or specific parts of those items or because they were shipped with other items which were rejected. I mean, th th this is a labyrinth. Th this is, you know, you, you could go literally nuts with this stuff. I mean, it, how can you possibly calculate every single scenario for every single item? Fuck Israel, man. Fuck them. Who has time for these people? 
Fuck the Israelis. They can go and screw themselves. They can go to hell. Don't, don't come here and talk to me about Israeli security. The Israelis don't have a right to security because they abandoned it. The Israelis abandoned their right to security when they decided to invade Palestine and steal land and kill people. How can you invade someone's country, steal their land, and then expect no repercussions? Are you out of your goddamn mind? What do you think this is? Everyone is here to fucking serve you because you happen to be Jewish. No one gives a crap. You don't have the right to steal land. Here's the best part. So oftentimes when a single item, a single item is considered dual use by Israel, the truck is forced to exit the queue. Reloading the truck to be able to enter the inspection line again can take 20 days. Okay, so for one item, if one item it doesn't please the concentration camp Israeli guards, the truck has to go all the way to the back of the queue and repack everything, and that takes 20 days. Let me remind you right now as I'm speaking to you, you have 1,200 trucks just waiting outside Gaza because the Israelis won't let them in. The Americans won't force the Israelis to let them in. And El Sisi, the Egyptian president, is a bitch who works for them and just does their bidding and complies. Well done. Another Uncle Tom. Going back to the New York Times article, right, very quickly. Look at that. 1,200 trucks that are waiting outside and 800 of them. 800 of them contain food supplies. So that is the overwhelming majority. Now, of course, the New York Times, being the good Zionist agents that they are, they have to go and sprinkle in some conspiracy theories about, oh, you know, but UNRWA and, uh, you know, that whole Hamas, Hamas thing. I, I don't care. Uh, there's genocide, people are starving. I don't want to hear about uh, Hamas or Hamas or Hamas. Go to hell. I don't care. I do not give a crap. This is irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant. Because, you know, the Israelis have blockaded Gaza. When, when, on October 7th, when Galant, the Israeli defense minister, sat in front of a camera and said, no food, no electricity, no water, no, f uh, no fuel. He didn't say because UNRWA have, you know, committed a, 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 an attack with Hamas. This is rubbish. They, they planned this genocide. They said from day one, we were starving 2.3 million people. There was nothing about UNRWA. Don't, don't give me this crap. Don't, don't come here and smear UN employees. Do you know the Israelis have butchered 165 UN staff? They, they literally murder UN workers. How could you possibly trust a word that they say about the UN? And this, I mean, don't, don't get me started, please. I, I'm, I, I'm not even going to go into this. UN and British officials. Um, yeah, wait, before I go there, look at this. Trucks sit in miles long lines at every checkpoint and are forced to start over even if one item is, uh, inside is rejected, right? So we have this now confirmed by the, uh, you know, uh, the graceful New York Times and Oxfam, okay? Some aid workers have said it is not clear why a shipment might not pass inspection. Inspectors do not usually say why an item is refused. Wow. Wow, I mean, that's, that's such a genius system, right? It, it, so we're supposed to guess. Just, you know, let's, let's all guess. Hmm. I mean... This shows you it's intentional. When, when the, the uh, inspectors, who again have no business, th these are Israelis. They are not Egyptian officials and they are not Palestinian officials. They have no business inspecting. I do, please, you have to understand this. You have to understand this point. Every single one of you watching right now has to understand how insane this is. I'm I want to show you this. Imagine, let's imagine, for example, right now, let's go, let's go to the United States, okay? Okay, this is the US. Let's say, for example, Mexico want to drive trucks into the United States because people are starving. Okay? Simple, very simple. They want to drive straight up into Texas. And then what happens is Guatemala 
Guatemala come and stick their fucking noses right here in the middle of the border and say, no, 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 we want to inspect the trucks. Who the hell are you? This is not your goddamn border. You have nothing to do with this. Did you grasp how insane this is? You have to understand how insane this is. Again, another example. This is like as if Germany want to deliver supplies to France and then Italy come and stick their noses in the middle of the border or the, or the Austrians come and, and meddle in the middle of the border and say, no, 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 we want to look at the trucks and we're going to delay the trucks. And we're not even going to tell you why we're delaying the trucks. We have, you have to guess why, the, why this item was banned. I mean, th th that just by itself is, is comical and absurd. But there are 2 million people who have no food and who are being bombed. Do you, do you grasp how sick these Israelis are? They are truly evil. UN and British officials have said that critical goods such as water filters and scissors included in medical kits for treating children, okay? These are medical kits for treating children are being rejected because they could be used for military purposes. Yeah, you know, it, 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 when you have a scissor in a medical kit for children, you can make a, a bazooka out of that, you know? You could make an RPG-7. Easily, man. Kogat, the Israeli unit that supervises aid deliveries. You, no, 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 you mean the concentration camp guards that starve people in Gaza. That is how a proper journalist writes the goddamn news. Denied this. Okay, they denied this. Really? So what are all the trucks doing outside then? And said that only 1.5% of trucks are turned away. I mean, who, nobody, no one asked about the percentage. Uh, and, and not only is that figure a lie, but this is, this is not the claim. The claim here, I mean, it's, it, the, the, the issue that is being put to the Israelis is that you are turning away uh, entire trucks, 20 tons of, of uh, you know, supplies because of a tiny item without even telling people. That is what is being put to the Israelis. And they say, no, actually 1.5% are being turned away. Who asked you about the percentage? I mean, that figure is a lie, but who, who asked you? The deputy director of UNRWA, Scott Anderson, said Israel needs to improve the efficiency of its inspect inspections by adding more scanning equipment and should extend working hours at the crossings. Here's the best part, which close on Friday afternoon through Saturday for Sabbath. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. You got, got to respect the, the Sabbath of the Israelis, right? So, sorry, uh, two million people, you have to shut up and starve. Uh, your wounds have to get infected because there's no medicine coming in. Uh, you know, they, you, you have to run a fever and, I don't know, maybe die because there, there's no water, there's no uh, medicine coming in. Screw you, you know, you got, you got your, uh, your legs blown off, amputated. Ah, uh, well, there's no morphine. You got to wait for the Sabbath, right? The Jews come first. I wish, I wish these people were even Jewish. They're just, they're Zionist scum. They, they, they hijack the religion and then use it as a, as a political cover. It, 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 you know, they want to respect the Sabbath? Why don't you respect thou shall not kill and thou shall not steal, you fucking murderers? This is uh, an MP, a member of parliament, who wrote to David Cameron, okay? The United Nations is not the one that requested the closing um, of, a, of a crossing on Saturdays. The Isra Israelis close it due to Sabbath. So that's David Cameron now confirming this as well. Where, whereas the Israelis were lying and saying the UN, the UN went to the Israelis and told them, please close the crossing on Sabbath so, you know, all the people we take care of can starve. We beg you. <laughs> Aid is not getting into Gaza due to arbitrary denials by the Israeli government and lengthy clearance procedures, including multiple screenings and narrow opening windows in daylight hours. UK aid for Gaza has been routinely held up, waiting for Israeli permissions. Some UK-funded aid stuck at the border for just under three weeks, waiting for approval. One of the key reasons for distribution issues within Gaza, Gaza is that Israel is preventing the necessary staff from getting visas. Don't you just love what, what conniving, scheming, uh, uh, I'm really trying not to swear, 
<laughs> devils they are. The Israelis say, we, we are not holding up the aid. When the trucks get into Gaza, there's no one to distribute them. That's what it says in the New York Times article, right? It's not our fault. There's no one there to distribute it. And the truth is, and David Cameron confirms this, there's no one there because Israel is not giving people visas, which again is mind-blowing. Why do I need permission from a, a scumbag Israeli to go into Palestine? That's not your country. Who are you to... You have no authority, no jurisdiction, no right. It's like they take half the country and then they still want to control the whole damn thing. It's, it's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. I mean, th this is truly theft of epic proportions. Theft of epic proportions. Israel has the ability to turn the taps back on and get water into Gaza. David Cameron calls on them to do so. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'll respect uh, your wishes, Dave. Dodgy Dave. I'm, I'm sure, right? Because you've been so frank and forward and bold and direct and honest with them. Yeah, you call on them. You know, I, I, I also call on the moon and the sun to descend from the heavens and sit in my, my palm. <laughs> you bloody... Crowd, you bastard, really. These people are scum. And then look at the Germans. Look at these crowds with their, with their post here. Oh, look, the team Luftwaffe. It's so, <laughs> anytime we hear of the Luftwaffe, that's always good. <laughs> scum. They're dropping 4.4 tons of food on the beach in Gaza. You know, basically, the Germans throwing some crumbs to the Palestinians that they are killing. The, the, this army... The Nazis, the German Nazis, because we're dealing with two Nazis. We've got German Nazis and Israeli Nazis. They're both Nazis. They're both fascist bastards. The Germans, who are the second supplier of weapons to Israel, who are murdering this exact population down there in the photograph. Down there, right there in the photograph. They then come and drop crumbs. Do you know what 4.4 tons is? It's nothing. That's nothing. A truck going into Gaza, one truck can carry 20 tons, for example. Right? So, so they, they, this is a one-time drop of four tons, which is nothing, crumbs, and then they, they, they post it on social media like they're proud of themselves. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. I've, I've really never, ever seen uh, uh, this kind of uh, disgusting, uh, depraved behavior on, on an international level on an international scale. It is truly something to behold. Witness, witness before you the decadence. Witness before you the terrorism, the sickness. Witness it. Can you even believe your eyes and ears?